Welcome to Scoop World Order. I hope you guys had a great day today. This is a humongous day for Ohio State football, the future of Ohio State athletics. Ross Bjork is our new athletic director. We spoke about it yesterday. It's official today. It starts on July 1st. I think this is one of the best hires in recent history between him and Ted Carter, our new president. I've never been more excited about a battery between uh, the president and the athletic director. I think this is going to be unbelievable for the university going forward, uh, navigating the new challenges, NIL. Uh, we got a ms guy. He's dealt with NIL at a very high level. This is going to be humongous for the program. He knows um, how to build, uh, you know, how, how to uh, just develop stuff at a very high level. Again, when you deal with AM, you're dealing with potentially the most money in the entire country. So you've got a lot of people to deal with and you've got to kind of uh, do it, you know, trial by fire sometimes. And some stuff he did was great. Some stuff maybe not so great, but he's got a lot of experience. And I think he's going to have fresh ideas for the athletic department that we desperately need, uh, especially on the fundraising side. He's a fundraising machine. So I think this is going to be uh, a nails hire by uh, Ted Carter and our uh, board of trustees. So shout out to those guys. They went a different direction. They didn't do status quo. They didn't do an underling. Uh, and I really, really am excited that we're taking Texas A&M's athletic director. I think this is going to be huge. Uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys. A shout out to uh, my girl, Jesse Davin. She's home. Her, her, and the dad watch every night. Uh, she's been in and out of the hospital. So we we're praying for you, Jesse. We appreciate you guys so much. Always tuning in, kicking it with us. Um, again, appreciate all your nice thoughts on Twitter. Uh, great emails. Uh, appreciate my guy. I got to get his name right because I... He sent me, um, you know, I've had so many of you guys reach out and say, Kirk, I know you don't sound great, feel sick. Alex Revelis uh, has a nasal spray company uh, that he's sending me a package of, I sound so bad. So I appreciate you guys uh, thinking of me, uh, taking care of me, appreciate it. I'm on the other side of this flu, but I'm feeling really good right now. Super excited about where we're at. If you guys enjoy this content, leave us a like, click subscribe, also click that little alert bell. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from. And shout out who you guys watch with, because it's funny, I, I, people watch with their daughters, you know, Jesse and her dad watch together, uh, I've, I've met spouses that watch the show together, families watch the show together, that's really cool, I never really thought about that, I usually assume it's mostly a bunch of dudes sitting on the couch, uh, eating some chips, having a cold beer, and watching the show, but if there's something other than that, I appreciate seeing the different demographics, so thank you. Um, and also, uh, again, you guys, shout out where you guys are watching from, and shout out your thoughts on the athletic director, huh? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments, uh, as always. I'm going to bring in my good friend, a donor, a guy who's given money, a guy who's had a sign put up, taken down, put up, and maybe taken down again. Uh, Mr. Nevada Buck, uh, the king of the tennis center. How are you tonight? I'm doing great, man. Lots going on in the uh, the world of Ohio State football between you know, coaching stuff and Michigan stuff. You know, Harbaugh's out here in the... Uh, out in the area, out here in Southern California, so I can kind of feel a disturbance in the force, and uh, got some stuff on that, and uh, just lots, lots to unwind about some re recruits and portal stuff, and uh, Ohio, Ohio State lost another kid to the portal today, and maybe yeah. getting another kid to the portal here shortly. So lots, uh, lots to unwind. Yeah. Before I skip on that, yeah, Sam Hart is a, um, you know, the portal. It's a weird deal. So Sam Hart is a guy that graduated. I was told today, like at the bowl site, he needed 12 credits to graduate, um, to be able to be a grad transfer and get in the portal. So somehow they miraculously got him 12 credits done in about three weeks, which is amazing. Um, that is like expedited, but they got it done. So he is officially in the portal. Uh, sometimes they want to, you know, kind of move these kids out, get another spot, uh, for a new recruit, another, whatever, you know, maybe it's for this Dom Kirk's kid, the DN that we're taking. Uh, you know, if someone's coming in, someone's going to go. So that's how it works. So D is a grad transfer for those of you that are astute and follow the calendar and are like, well, I thought you said the transfer portal closed for Ohio State Kirk. Well, if you're a grad transfer, it's a different window and you can basically transfer at any time. So he's a grad transfer. He is out the door, uh, a tight end. I uh, didn't have much of a career here. Very nice kid. Uh, wish him the best of luck. Nevada, Ross Bjork is our new athletic director. Um, I was fortunate enough to know Andy Geiger, nowhere near as well as you knew Andy Geiger. He was there uh, 03, 04, and then Gene came in 05. Uh, he's been there since then. Gene is out. Uh, Ross Bjork is in. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, again, you've been around multiple athletic directors. What makes a great athletic director to you? And does Ross Bjork have the attributes you look for in a, in a good athletic director? Well, I think to have a great athletic director, you need to have a great president. And I think, you know, when you think about when Ohio State's really cooking, 
you've got a president that that really likes football and is really you know down with football, really supportive of football, and really recognizing the importance of football in terms of you know its place in the uh, in the universe. And I think that's what we have right now, and that's why I'm so excited. It's kind of the tandem of you know of Ted Carter and and the new AD is is that's a dynamic duo as far as I'm concerned because you've got guys that really understand the need to support the football financially, you know, build the new facilities and then go out there and do the necessary things from a fundraising standpoint to make that happen. And I think that we've been kind of on and off with that for years from, I mean, the, the whole Brook years of no tailgating and then the Michael Drake debacle and Christina Johnson. And I, I'm just, we've just been through this, this parade of, uh, of, presidents that's just i think it's made it really difficult for the athletic director to be as effective as they need be and so right now i feel like we're hitting on all cylinders in terms of if you're an ohio state football fan this is the hire you want this is a guy that you want that understands the need to raise money for nil and ohio state's kind of taking a different approach with nil where a lot of teams are spending nil on high school kids and trying to get them attracted to the program where Ohio State spending eighty percent of their money is to retain their roster and keep their kids in school and kind of pay the kids that have proven that they can perform at the at the college level. That's kind of a different approach. And the the big bonanza for us, the big jackpot, was when we had you know ten plus kids stay, you know this year that would ordinarily go to the NFL draft. And and that's why Ohio State's so well positioned for twenty twenty four. That's why we'll be number one, number two, number three somewhere in the preseason polls. And that's something that Ross Bjork understands that at a fundamental level in terms of raising money for NIL, how to get that from the big boosters, how to do that and how to do that in conjunction with the president. So that, that's why I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that we've had some awful presidents recently. Michael Drake was awful. Christina Johnson was awful. Um, both were disgraces to the university. And uh, I think we got it right with Ted Carter. We've got a guy who understands our culture the Midwest uh, toughness, you know, kind of, I mean, he's a tough guy, man, but you look at his resume, you're like, Holy cow, this is, this is the kind of guy I'd want to follow. I'd be excited if he could, uh, I wish I could put his name on, on my diploma instead of, uh, you know, Gordon Gee, who's on both of mine, sadly. Um, I'd rather have a guy like Ted Carter leading the, the charge. And I think Ross Bjork, um, you know, when, when we bring in new blood to any endeavor, uh, namely an athletic department, or a football program, which are the two things that are nearest and dearest to my heart, like, will they actually bring new ideas? Will they bring uh, fresh stuff? Have they worked on a level like this before? You know, again, a lot of people wanted Pat Chun from Washington State. I've known Pat for a long time. Very underwhelming candidate. I know he's familiar. I'm sure a lot of people wanted him because they'd be like, oh, I'd have another good source in the athletic department if Pat came back. And it's like, I'd rather have a guy who's talented, who's worked on a higher level. Again, just uh, on the face of running Texas A&M's athletic department budget versus Washington State, it's apples and dog turds, basically. You know, I mean, to hire Washington State, when, you have, when you're at Ohio State and you could basically hire any athletic director you want, why not go after the best? Go after a premier program, go after a guy who's dealt with mega money. He knows how to, to swim in those waters. You know, he's a shark in that ocean. He's not a minnow. Um, and that's why I'm excited about this guy. And again, I want to hear what new and fresh ideas this guy's had. Cause again, you know, for better or worse, when, when NIL first popped off, these guys were, you know, kind of spending money like drunken sailors at AM. What did you learn from that Walter Nolan class? What did you learn from how to do it better, how to be more sophisticated? Uh, do you refocus and recalibrate and go get guys like Will Howard, uh, go get guys like Quinshawn Judkins, guys that are, you know, proven commodities, good kids, track record, um, maybe shorter term, than freshmen, but guys that, you know, they, they see that Ohio State could be their, their their launching pad. You know, these guys are coming to Ohio State for a year uh, to, to improve their NFL draft status. Will Howard and Quinshawn Judkins, are, Judkins, excuse me, are very uh, transparent about that. And I think that that's going to be huge. And again, I think, you know, how do you make this football program better? Because again, win-loss-wise, A&M, you know, at the end was a total disaster under Jimbo. But, you know, when he did that extension, man, they were 9-1, LSU was coming after Jimbo. I mean, Jimbo, there was a time where he was kind of in that same tier, might have been slightly below Saban, but he was in that same tier as Urban. I mean, in 13, he won a national championship a year before we did. So, you know, if if you you know, if that year he's nine and one, if for some reason 
you lose that guy to LSU because LSU is going to spend $100 million on him. You know, imagine you're the athletic director and you let like an Urban Meyer walk out of the door of Ohio State and go to a rival, go to Penn State or something because Penn State paid through the nose for him. Like imagine the type of heat you'd be under. So I don't really fault him for that, but I also think that he's a guy, um, you know, that he's been around. He's had to make hard decisions. He fired Jimbo. Uh, you know, he left that vial behind. I'm sure he's excited to leave that in the dust uh, at A&M. But um, I'm just excited to see what this guy can bring to the table. We have a ton of Super Chats. We're going to start getting through these. If you guys have a question, Super Chat us, please. We appreciate you guys, as always. Uh, any recruiting news? Word on Downs. Um, I think if I'm, if I'm imagining Caleb Downs is getting offered probably a ton of money to stay at Bama, they hired Kane Womack uh, as their new DC, a guy that we knew from Indiana. He actually clinicked with Nick Saban. I'll never forget this. In 2000, when we were getting ready to play those guys in the championship, he actually went down and like clinicked with Bama staff because he took the South Alabama job, which I thought was kind of a snake move. But he's out of the DC at Bama. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts on Caleb Downs at this hour? <coughs> well, I, I, I again, well, the, the there's been various gating items through this, and well, well next gating item, the kind of the next shoe to drop was going to be who was the DC. Now we know that answer that, that they've got now is position coach uh, was the Buffalo uh, head coach linguist. And so I think the Caves got a decision to make. And, you know, Ohio State's kind of waiting on him patiently. I think we'll all know here. I don't think it's going to stretch out more than the next 24, 48 hours um, and how he feels. Now, you can tell by looking at other Alabama players. I mean, a lot of Alabama players have left. They may have lost four defensive backs or whatever it is. So uh, will he follow? I think it's unknowable. Ohio State doesn't know right now. But um, I've got some people that have told me today that they expect that he's going to enter the portal tonight. I don't know if I believe that or not. I'm not sure if that's just wishful thinking or if that's inside information. So, But I'm watching it carefully. If, if he enters the portal, I've been saying all along he'll go to Ohio State. So I think it's really down to Ohio State or State Alabama. I think we'll all know in the next 24, 48 hours. Yeah, I, I agree. Um something else that was really interesting on the road, yeah, the, the beauty of modern – information as you can see kind of who is with who and this was interesting so you have ryan day uh, down in florida uh this is south Florida express um coach dirt on the left tj alford uh no relation to tony a kid we are very likely to get a star linebacker we'll probably break him down tomorrow and james lornitis so james lornitis can go on the road right now he took parker fleming's spot um not in an official capacity, but you're allowed to have 10 coaches on the road. So James is out on the road. Uh, and who's he with? He's with Ryan Day. So, you know, he's not just there to be the driver. In, in, in my eyes, when I've seen something like this, it's almost like it's like an extended interview type deal. You know, a lot of times these coaches, they interview, they sit in the staff room, uh, you know, go through your go through your defense, how you teach things, go through your philosophies. Uh, you know, those things can be six to eight hours are brutal. I mean, I, I saw urban interview guys, uh, in 2011, um, in December and it was, they're, they're brutal. They're long days. Tom Herman was one, Paul Petrino, Harry, he stand. Um, but you know, if you're with Ryan, you're on the private jet. So you're jumping in the private jet with, with Ryan, uh, whatever time you guys start, you know, they leave at 6am or the night before or whatever. Um, you head down to self. So you've got a solid two and a half hours in the air with, with Ryan day where it's, it's not, hey, you know, what's a good barbecue recipe? It's like, no, like I mean, he's really digging deep into James to figure out if this is the guy that he wants to hire as a new coach, you know, hire him to the staff. Um, there were some very, very dumb reports of people wondering if you know, James wanted to actually be a coach. Did he want to go on the road? I'm like, dude, like he's 37 years old. He's the same age as Gerard Mayo. Gerard Mayo just got named head coach of the Patriots. Like, you're telling me James can't coach linebackers at Ohio State? Like, are you crazy? Um, so I think this is a positive sign for James. I think James deserves to be a head coach on staff. I think James wants to be a head coach on staff. I think that he would lock down kids like like TJ, um, you know, this, this superstar linebacker from Florida that we're likely to get. Um, I just think James has a magnetic personality. He has great charisma. He's a great leader. Very, very wicked, smart guy, uh, fantastic teacher. Um, and I think that there's there's no ceiling on what he could do in the coaching profession. Um, and his, you know, his 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 ceiling, his potential is like 
high level, very, very high level head coach, like Ohio State ish type head coach. That's his ceiling. So, um, again, some people probably to see this photo. Oh, James is on the road with Ryan. I think Ryan is using this as a, as an interview. I think he's using this to see how how does James handle himself in a high school, uh, different coaches, maybe different positions. You know, because again, it, you know, he's not probably just running around. If you're in South Florida, you're stopping at 10, 15 schools today. They're not all going to be for linebackers. You're going to go go see, you know, uh, top receivers, top whatever. How does he handle himself with with guys that maybe aren't guys that are directly in his room? Um, you know, does he put in the same effort, build the same rapport? Um, and I'm sure James does. Cause again, James is a guy that I revere. I think he's a fantastic person, fantastic player, and he's going to be a fantastic coach. So this was really, uh, this was pleasing to me. Nevada, your thoughts on James Laurinaitis potentially being added to staff. I think it's done. I think it's happening. I think it's done. Um, I, I would, I would bet money that it's done and um i would expect that that would it'll be announced shortly so i i really do expect uh expect that to happen i think people that are around the program around day that have been around the two of them even as, as recently as you know the, the last day as so it, it sure seems like james is, is part of the permanent staff part of the accountable 10. um i'm talking about on a on a go forward basis not just on an interim basis so I, I I think it's done. I'm telling you. I'm calling it right now. Yeah, it'd be absolutely monstrous for recruiting. Uh, Bitch again, K. Thanks for the deuce. Appreciate you, my friend. How does a good? How much does a good OT cost in the portal NIL wise? Well, that is an interesting question. I think it depends on who, how good. Um, God, I I'd say a few hundred, probably three three to five six hundred, depending on how good. I mean. I don't know who is the best portal tackle that I've seen um, enter. You know, we got Josh Simmons. I mean, he got a couple hundred grand to come here from San Diego State, so he's kind of a kind of a like a like a bargain basement tackle. Um, I thought he played well last year. I think he's got a lot of upside. Uh, but in terms of like, have I seen like a true superstar tackle hit the portal and transfer? I don't know if I've seen one of those. I haven't seen one go to Georgia. I haven't seen one go to Bama. Uh, I, I mean, the kid that that um. Michigan got from Arizona State. He ended up being all Big Ten, but I didn't think he was that great. Uh, would he have started for us? Probably. But did I think he was like, a, he wasn't as good as Dewan or Paris or some of the guys that we've had in the past. So I, I don't know. I mean, I would imagine if we got a guy, and, and again, it, it also depends on how many years of eligibility he has left. Because if it's a one-year guy, he's got to be, you know, cheaper than if he's a multi-year guy. Um, but I don't know. I, I haven't seen a great tackle. End of the, like, I haven't seen, here's the thing. I haven't seen a guy enter the portal this year at offensive tackle. Where I was like, oh, my God, if we get that guy, write him in ink at right tackle, or if he's good enough left tackle and put Jimmy Simmons at right tackle. I've not seen that guy. I've seen a lot of guys that are used to be four stars, used to be five stars. I've seen a lot of guys from smaller programs, you know, we, and we did that with Victor Cutler. And Victor Cutler was an absolute catastrophe, absolute bust. You know, that was a guy – you know, the, the the bad thing that can happen with NIL is when you misevaluate a kid like Victor Cutler and people say that he can play and then he shows up and he sucks and, and, he, and, he, and he can't, he's just not, you know, yeah, not a bad kid, but just can't play at Ohio State. And then you're paying that kid. So you're paying a kid who stinks and he can't play and he can't provide any depth and he can't play anywhere from tackle to guard to center. And that guy's making money. And then you have a bunch of guys on the roster that are better than him that aren't making any money. So that's kind of the reverse of NIL. Like if you pay a guy, he better be coming in here and playing. Like we don't need guys to stand there and eat sunflower seeds on the sideline. And that's what Victor Cutler did. And that's why he's gone now. And he, and he graduated and then he double dipped. So at least he got an Ohio State degree out of us because we didn't get anything out of him. Uh, Dave Jack 8, thanks for the deuce. Innocent people, then us from Unity. That is a great point, Nevada. What is the latest on Jim Harbaugh who wants like diplomatic immunity from Michigan and his contract and he can't be fired. And I'm just like, Holy cow. Is there anything else you're going to ask for? Um, your thoughts on Harbaugh right now? Well, look, first of all, you don't believe any stories that you see coming out on Jim Harbaugh right now. And the reason we say that is it's not because we're trying to be like conspiracy theorists or tin foil hat guys. It's just, he's negotiating and his, his agents negotiating with the San, the San Diego, haha, Los Angeles chargers to become the head coach. 
So what he's got to present out there is that there's a viable alternative, that he's seriously considering Michigan. You know, he needs to do that to placate the Michigan faithful. There's lots of reasons why he'd want to plan a story like that. Um, but also, you know, for, for Michigan, you know, like they can't call his bluff. They can't, they can't say, okay, Jim, we'll go along with you in terms of doing it. So he's putting things in there that they, he knows they can't say yes to, asking for immunity. This is the guy that's already declared himself innocent. A lot of people on the internet have said that the, the president of the NCAA said they did nothing wrong and this was a nothing burger and they're moving on. And then all of a sudden, Jim Harbaugh is part of these kind of go back forth. I'm going to sign the extension. I'm not going to say it's, it's reportedly saying, well, I need complete immunity from everything going on with the NCAA. I mean, look, they know. They all knew. They all know. Um the NCAA started to come down hard on people. I don't know if you've noticed this. Yeah. It, there's definitely an undercurrent of that. It's more than just the Florida State thing. I mean, it, it's it, they're starting to really start to slap back on people. And I'm telling you, it's because they're fighting for their legitimacy. They're fighting for their very survival right now. And this Michigan case, for a Michigan fan, it's coming at the wrong place, wrong time, because the NCAA is looking to make an example out of somebody. And, boy, Michigan walked in the door and handed in a multiple level one infraction. So they can't say yes to anything from Harbaugh that lets them off the hook for NCAA violations or obligates them to pay him despite the fact that I'm getting hammered by the NCAA. So they, they, he knows that's a no-go. So that's why you float something like out there, out there to Michigan. He knows they can't say yes to that. And it's certainly the thing you say when you're guilty because he knows he's guilty, and that's what's going on. Yeah, I think it's... Uh... It's going to be stunning to see how this all comes down uh, when he takes his Chargers job. I, just, I mean, that's to me, man. All those open jobs, that's the job. A Chargers job, man. You got Justin Herbert, young, big quarterback extension. I mean, that's the guy I want. I, I mean, I don't want Dak Prescott. I don't want any of these other jobs because you're tied to the quarterback. And here, you walk in and have go. it. Here we go. Yeah, yeah I know. You're your boy. God, did they look bad. I wonder if Belichick is here. That'd be amazing. Uh, Brandon J, thanks for the five. I know this is mostly a football chat, but what the heck is wrong with Holtman and his ability to coach talent? New AD needs to make the change ASAP. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it, it's so funny. I happened to watch the game the other day. It was a noon game, Martin Luther King Day. So, you know, a lot of people were off. So they had it at noon. And it's just like, they just look so lifeless. You know, it's such a weird outfit because, like, we've got guys that I guess are talented, but our guys can never shoot. Our guys always are terrible shooters for whatever reason. It's like every other team that we want, we go, we play Wisconsin and, you know, Michigan and these teams, and they shoot the lights out, and then we can't shoot ever. Um, so I don't know if that's a fundamental thing or if it's anxiety or what it is, but, you know, I, I've met Coach Holtman. He's a great guy, really nice guy. I really want him to win. But he hasn't won it anywhere near the level that we need to win at at Ohio State. Um, again, for for some of these guys, man, this new athletic director coming in is, you know, like I, I couldn't see Gene. You know, Gene's got you know five months left. He's not going to fire anybody. He's he's coasting to to the finish line before he moves to Arizona and retires. Um, but no matter what are your thoughts on the basketball program, Chris, because like, you know, when Thad was here. You know, and, and I love Thad Mata. Thad Mata was the greatest gentleman I'd ever been around. I mean, he's one of the nicest human beings I'd ever been around. I used to talk to him all the time. Again, he's just just a great, easy to root for, uh, great family. You know, I loved Thad Mata, and he's doing pretty good right now. Um, but your thoughts on what's going on with the basketball program? Well, I just think, like, bas modern basketball, modern college basketball is just all about recruiting. It's all about leveraging the yeah. AAU relationships. And, you know, Matta was able to do it for that one magical class when they brought in, yes. you know, Connolly and Cook and, and Greg Oden. And, you know, Holtman's just, he is who he is. He's a, he's a tremendous gentleman. Uh, he's a great fundamental teacher. He's a decent recruiter. He's a decent tactical coach. But, you know, I mean, he is what he is. It's just, we're, that's where we're going to be in the, 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 I mean, our place in the college football or college basketball landscape is just kind of where we are, you know, top 25, maybe 20, maybe 30 or whatever it is. But unless you change that and you go after somebody who's going to go out there and recruit like a demon and, and probably, frankly, skirt the rules because college basketball, I mean, you think college football is bad. 
college basketball is a million times worse. And literally the only way you can win in college basketball consistently is to, is to run afoul of the rules. That's just, it's the only way. So I don't really know if you want to get into that devil's bargain right there on college basketball, or you just kind of accept the fact that we're going to just be okay. Uh, because I'm not sure if you can be better than okay without cheating in college basketball. That's just my, that's my perspective from having been kind of in that world for a while. Um, and I, I, I don't say I have, have the, the final word on it, but that's, that's certainly my perspective. Uh, I agree. Uh, Will, 8282, eight, two. thanks for the two. How much NIL money can we spend on Caleb Downs? Well, that is a great question. I would bet close to a million, um, just because I know how much we still have left from guys that we went after in the portal, how much we have left from JT. <coughs> Um, what he ended up getting, so that's a close to a million. I mean, we, we gave Will Howard a million too. Now he's a quarterback, so obviously quarterbacks get paid more than anybody. But, you know, there's a big faction of people that want Caleb Downs at Ohio State, big faction of NIL people that want Caleb Downs. So, you know, if we get that guy in our back end, I mean, our defense already going to be nasty with Lathan coming back, but you get Caleb Downs back there too, good God. I mean, I don't know what else you need to win, but this will be, that'd be the most maybe the most talented defense I've seen at Ohio State. If we throw him in the back end next to Lathan with Denzel and Jordan Hancock and Davison, I mean, that secondary would be loaded for bear. And I would be all for it. And the money people know that. I mean, the money people watch the show. They know what Caleb Downs is. They know what he could do to this team. Uh, they know how, you know, again, and again, I think we're still in good shape. Um, but you throw him back there, man. Whew. So let's say close to a million. Uh, super nerd. Thanks for the five. What is a quick list of things you look for when watching film, evaluating offensive line play? Tremendous question. Um, you know, obviously I think the best, uh, place to evaluate guys, uh, is at camp. Uh, when they come to camp, obviously you have to do your homework, watch the film, make sure that they're physical enough to play at Ohio state. But yeah, you know, when you get them to camp, you can see how good they are versus good players. Again, you, you get that last group of guys in one-on-one pass rush, and it's all good on good. It's good on good. It's the best guys on both sides. The best You want to get that You get that five-star D end. You want him to go against you know Taylor Decker or whatever tackle you got out there um, and see how they do, see if they compete. Um, you know, we, we, and, and sometimes you, you got to really evaluate Cam because we had a kid, Tim Gardner, who's a kid that was a, you know, he was a, a kind of a, a project-ish type kid that we liked. But he ended up being, you know, he didn't make it, but he was a guy that we put him out there against Taekwon. Taekwon was a kid, was a four and a half star superstar. Nobody could block Taekwon. We put Tim out there, and Tim wasn't a tackle, he's a guard. Put him out of tackle against Taekwon, man, he was locking Taekwon down. And he was a little kind of chubby dude. You know, didn't look like much, but man, when he got out there and was kick sliding, he looked great. And he was stoning Taekwon. And Taekwon is, he's in the league, he's got a big second contract. Great kid, great player, um, you know. So, like, it's it's always good to see those guys have those flash moments. But I, <clears throat> on film, I think, you know, do guys finish is is, is huge. Um, do guys look for work? Are guys always active looking uh, to try to inflict pain on guys? I think that's huge. Um, a lot of times it's hard to evaluate pass protection on film because, you know, a lot of these kids, like, you know, you, you watch the Armstrong twins, um, at St. Ed's, you know, they they play really good teams, but most teams aren't like St. Ed's. They don't play like na a national schedule and that type of deal. So a lot of times, like when I watched Taylor Decker when he's at Vandalia Butler, his film, he was murdering guys that were like five foot ten and he's throwing them on the ground. And and, you know, and that's good because that's all you can do. I mean, you gotta block who, who they put against you. There's nothing, you know, you, you don't you know, the thing you don't want to do is is take it easy because the guys are so helpless. But a lot of times you, you're watching guys dominate kids that aren't on the level that they're going to see, but it's good to see the finish. Um, it's good to see the twitch, the speed. It's always easier to see that in person than it is on film. But I, um, I like to, to evaluate finishing. And if there's lateral movements where these guys are pulling, that's always good to check out. Um, you know, Elfline's film was great. Cause he could, he could really pull well, get out in space, finish guys, um, you know, so he was, you know, once you get to know these kids personally and see how they work, you work with them at camp, it's, it's, you know, either this or it's this as urban Meyer used to always say. Um, but film wise, you know, you want to see the finish, you want to see the effort, you want to see toughness. 
Um, then you want to get them to camp, you know, unless they're just ungodly, like Larry Mitton. So you watch this film for two minutes and you're like, yeah, this kid, I'd take him. And if it was the NIL days, I'd say, let's give him a million bucks here to make sure we get this kid. Um, but that's, you know, we were going against Ole Miss back then and actually did do that. Um, so we couldn't beat that. Uh, Nevada, do you have anything to add to that uh, when you're watching offensive line film? Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll defer to the big man on that. I'll defer to the big man on that one. <laughs> I always like to, I, I just have to ask, you know. Um, I appreciate it. Nikki Buckets, thanks for the deuce. Ryan and James recruiting together, job interview. Yes, all day, every day. Like, that's the first thing I saw when I saw this photo. They're down in Miami together. So that means, you know, the one good thing about when you're recruiting, if you're James with Ryan Day, is you don't have to fly Southwest. You're flying on the jet, and you're taking the jet down there. So you get to be all fancy pants and eat fruit and drink Fiji water on the jet. Then you get down there. And you get to drive Ryan Day around. So he gets to see how good of a driver you are. Uh, and then he gets to see you in action around these coaches. And again, you know, James probably hasn't met most of these coaches. He's probably met maybe a few at camp. But these guys are guys that are down in South Florida. So you're, he's throwing you in a whole new ocean. And you got to go swim around and see how you do. And the guy like James ain't going to be scared of that. And James is, he's a magnetic guy, a magnetic personality. And I'm sure he crushed it. And hopefully that showed Ryan, hey, got to hire this guy. He's going to be the next Heartline. He's probably going to be better than Heartline as a recruiter. And again, we need that, um, not just defensively, but for the whole team. And James is the kind of guy that can help anybody out. So, you know, you, these guys, there's always a little bit of cross-pollination when you send, you know, a linebacker coach to an area. Uh, it's, it's not like you just go, you know, if, if they send James somewhere, hey, James, just go stop, stop and see the linebackers in Florida. It's like, no, he's going to stop and see J.J. Smith or, you know, the, the you know, J.J.'s obviously up here now, but he's going to go stop and see people of that ilk if there's some star um jamie french type receiver like james if he's down there they're gonna say hey go stop in and say hi to him and talk to the head coach and build a relationship because eventually that high school might produce a big time linebacker and then he knows you and you've stopped in and said hi and you've got that rapport built so again i think this is all great for james there isn't a human being on this earth pulling harder for james than i am so i'd love for him to get this job so i hope you can get it done because i like I said, this is a guy I bet a fortune on being really successful as a coach, and I want it to happen at Ohio State, not at Notre Dame or Wisconsin or in the NFL. Mark Crowley, thanks for the five. Appreciate you. If Michigan has to vacate Wayne's, does Coach Day's seat become less hot? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think with Ryan, with this year, I mean, literally everything in the universe is broke for Ohio State. Saban's gone. Harbaugh's going to be gone. J.J. McCarthy's going pro. I mean, they had like seven or eight guys to declare for the draft. So you know, we had two. Um, so I think his seat is going to be red hot. Um, but I think that he's embracing it, and he's he's loading up the he's loading up for bear right now, man. A new to Will Howard, Quinchon Judskins, getting seven guys back that could have declared for the draft, like. I think he's he's ready to rock. Nevada, with the vacated wins, does it make Ryan's seat less hot? I don't think it does, but I just love your opinion on that. Well, look, I think the cheating for two years that we know now that we know that that was going on, I mean, to me, does that change my perspective on those couple of games? I mean, I got to be honest, it does. Uh, does it lessen the, the hot seat for Ryan in terms of needing? No, I, you know, he needs to win. Next year, however, again, I'll argue against myself. The expanded playoff kind of mitigates that. Um, could he lose to Michigan and then make a run in the playoff? I mean, sure. Um, I, you know, I just, I think it's. Uh, look, he's got to win next year against Michigan in Columbus. He's going to win next year in Columbus. They are, they, they are uh, making it unfair. And uh, regardless of what Caleb Downs does, and I, I am not saying this in any way to say that we're not getting Caleb Downs. So I'm absolutely not saying that. I'm just, I don't want people to be like, oh, if we don't get Caleb Downs, oh, we're doomed. We're not, I mean, this is the, one of the best defenses I've ever seen returning to Ohio State right now before Caleb Downs was even on the radar. So uh, I, it would be icing on the cake. It would be the cherry on top. But uh, no, I think I think Ryan is I, I think Ryan is going to be uncomfortable going into next year, knowing that we got to win that Michigan game. But remember, guys, next year with the twelve team playoff, we can watch all the games comfortable in the thought that we're going to be in the playoff. So when we play, you know, Oregon early in the year, it's not do or die. It's not like the Texas game when you played them in '05, and that was basically you know an elimination game. You know, you lose that game to Texas. 
at home, you know, and, you know, the season's pretty much over at that point. It's not going to be that way. It's a, it's a brand new, all, all new existence watching college football. And I think Ryan will be the benefactor of that because I think it won't be so much live or die every week, uh, including that, uh, in, in that big rivalry game at the end of the end, end of November. So I think he'll be okay. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be amazing how the mind shut the mind shift in uh, in college football is going to shift. You look at yesterday, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, you look at the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks barely eke into the playoffs, you know, I don't know if they're like nine and eight or whatever their record is. I mean, they, I think they're the same record as the Bengals. The Bengals missed the playoffs. Bengals, uh, the, the Buccaneers, they beat the Eagles. So they're hot. The Eagles are in this unbelievable cold streak where they, you know, they went from being Super Bowl favorites, 10 and one or whatever, to, sliding all the way out of the playoffs and that's going to happen in college football now like there's going to be teams that i'm not saying you're going to have eight losses but you know there's going to be teams that have three losses that get in and they're going to be hot and they're going to be healthy and all of a sudden you're going to watch them do work in the playoffs and i think that everything's going to shift to how do we stay healthy how do we mitigate everything how do we get to the playoffs how do we win the playoffs and i think that you know the regular season like you look at the browns the cowboys uh these teams that had really nice regular seasons, you know, does it matter once you get smacked in the playoffs and you're out? Not really. I and mean, that's kind of the the thing that's going to matter. So I think that the, the playoff driven model for college football is going to be, I think it's going to be spectacular because, you know, with, NA, with NIL and the ability to maintain your roster, build depth, again, we're, you know, they're, they're, they're a scratch around with money from, from these collections right now that, you know, they got to get CJ Hicks a little bit more money keep him here. I mean, there's all these little nuanced things that, that is going on in roster management that never used to exist because now, you know, there's, there's guys that, Hey, I'm going to be the starting linebacker this year. Hey, you know, give me a little bread. Like, let's see what's going on. Like, and, and I think that when you have NIL functioning and that's why I think Ross Brooks, a huge hire is that he really gets an IL. Um, you got to keep this roster deep, healthy, and keep the reserves as best you can, man. Cause I'm telling you, these are long seasons. Like that's why getting, Quinshawn Judkins is unbelievable because we have a second number one running back and nobody has that. It's like getting a second ace in your in your hand. Like I mean, it's just like that's going to be a it's going to be dynamic, especially down the stretch if you know you can keep both these backs healthy. Um, but yeah, absolutely a job interview. Uh, let me see, Raymond Mitchell. Thank you for the five. Get ready, Buckeye fans. The cheaters up north are going to stop calling us the Yankees slash Golden State Warriors. Don't worry. Here for it. Is that because of our roster building? Well, I'm good with that. Again, I was always jealous of the Yankees when I was an Indians fan, and they'd hire, they'd, they'd sign guys that cost, you know, their their contracts cost as much as our entire payroll did. So, I'd rather be on that side of the fence than be on the other side. Nevada, are you worried about the super team stuff with Ohio State? Because you know, we haven't won anything yet, so we're not really a super team until we actually win something. But your thoughts on that? Well, I got to just tell you a story. I'll tell you a quick story just because it's a, it's, it seems like a great segue. I grew up hating the Yankees, hating it. You know, I, I'm a Baltimore Oriole, Cleveland Indian fan. So just hated the Yankees, rooted against them, just thought they were the worst. And then I had an opportunity to get into business with the Yankees. And I got the business with the Yankees and I got to meet Mr. Steinbrenner. Um, it, as I'm sure people are aware Mr. Steinbrenner was a huge Ohio State fan. Absolutely enormous Ohio State fan. You're talking about a guy who had multiple, multiple, multiple world championships there at the uh, at the Yankees. And you know what ring he wore every day? His Ohio State National Championship ring that they gave to him when they uh, won the National Championship in, in, in 02, 03, or whatever, whatever year you want to call that. Um, he wore that ring every single day. And, th- and th- I always found that fascinating. And I just... Uh, being part of that organization, being part of watching his kind of commitment to exits, not accepting anything but winning. I mean, his minor league teams, like people most time in minor league baseball, it's like, ah, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. If you lost two games in a row, Mr. Steinbrenner would call the manager personally and, and want to know why they lost two games in a row because the Yankees just don't lose games like that. And uh, it was just such a winning attitude and such a win. So I, I, I guess what I'd say is, when people on the outside of that, you look at it, and you hate it, and you say this, but when you're inside of it, you kind of accept it for what it is. And I, I, I kind of embrace the hate. I, I would love it if they start calling us the New York Yankees or the Golden State Warriors or, 
you know, whatever that is, because it's just a con- nobody talks about who's in last place, and no. uh, I think that I think it's a compliment. So uh, you bring it on. I I'll tell you what, I I love George Steinbrenner. I think he you know God God rest his soul, but he you know our band center is literally named after him. It's literally named the Steinbrenner band center. So I literally had to go find this photo to prove it to people because people don't realize. I don't think some, everyone knows the connection that. So this is right outside. This is in the stadium. Jonesing Steinbrenner Band Center. So that's where the band gets together when they go march around. Um, you know, uh, named after the wife of George Steinbrenner the uh, third. Opened in two thousand one. And again, like you know, they gave they gave him a national championship ring in out too. Um, that he uh, from and again, I don't want to confirm this, but I mean, he had it on his finger when he was buried. I believe I was told that. So, you know, again. People hate the Yankees in Ohio just because they're the Yankees. But I'm like, you know, they are Buckeyes. They love Ohio State. So, you know, again, like, do I do I hate them less? No, I just I'm always I love excellence. And the Yankees are excellence. They've always signified excellence. Um, You know, but so he was big Ohio State donor. I mean, he's got a big building named after him. And, you know, you guys can go check that out. So maybe you learned something today about George Steinbrenner. But, yeah, I'd, I'd be love. Uh, outside of them wearing navy blue, love everything else about them. Monty Mitchell, thanks for the five. Appreciate you. Is there anything scheme wise we haven't seen? Knowles unleash that we uh, that we could see with the majority of the defense. Like, well, I think our defensive ends are going to get turned loose even more so this year. That happened the last five games of the season where they were really letting these guys get loose, and magically our sack production went up. Now, again, when you f- place you know these guys versus super athletic quarterbacks. Be very, very careful. You tell these guys they can do whatever they want and rush however they want, then there's a lot of lanes that get created if guys aren't coordinated, and that's what gets you killed. You know, it's like you can do what you want, but if a guy gets out of his rush lane and one of these these athletic quarterbacks sees the lane and there's a breakdown and he can slip through there, he can generally scramble for a lot of yardage. So, you know, again, I know <coughs> people are obsessed with sacks. Sacks, 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 sacks. That's all people talk about with Jack Sawyer and JT. Oh, they suck. Oh, they're trash. Oh, they don't get sacks. Whatever. But, you know, when you see how good our team defense was, that's all I care about. You know, Bill Belichick's got a great saying. My favorite saying of Bill Belichick's is stats are for losers, and they are. Um, the only stat I care about is total points. You know, how many points do we give up in a season? How many points do we give up in a game? That's all I care about. I don't care if we give up 80, 850 million yards every single game. As long as we keep them out of the end zone, keep them off the scoreboard, then I'm good with it. So, again, I like uh, the way we play defense. I think that our DNs are going to eat this this year. Again, they're going to be going against – got to understand, now they're seniors. They're going against younger tackles, inexperienced tackles. A lot of the good tackles in the Big Ten, like Olu from Penn State's taken off. The guys from Michigan are taken off. Um, it's going to be really good, and I'm excited to see what these guys can do. Uh, Will8282, thank you for the deuce. What's the news on the Cheaters up north – getting punished nevada your thoughts on that um you're kind of the but i i just i think it's coming marchish your thoughts yeah march april march april is when they should have the notice of allegations and then it'll kind of start the whole process and that'll be a good read for those people that want to read about this stuff um you know yeah and underrated you know part of this whole thing has just been the lack of cooperation that the NCAA, I mean, like Stallions didn't even, now I understand Stallions was a Michigan employee. And as, uh, as an employee, you have an obligation to cooperate with the NCAA. And so he resigns and refuses to be interviewed by the NCAA. Won't do that. And he's like, oh, you're a great Michigan man. Well, there's a price that you have to pay for that when you thumb your nose at the NCAA and kind of go, well, I'm not going to, you know, I won't sit for your interview because those are the people that are going to be handing out the punishment. So Whatever the opposite of cooperation, that's what Michigan's been doing with this, and uh, I, it's going to cost them dearly when all this stuff comes down because the NCAA is is looking for the, the looking for somebody to land down on hard on, and and Michigan's spun the wheel of awful, and it's landed on Michigan, so it's time for them to pay. Yeah, and what what Stallions did is it's so different than in like a regular court case where if there's some heinous act or some whatever, like when people cooperate. They either get no sentence or they get a light sentence or whatever. If you don't cooperate and you thumb your nose at the people, then you usually get hammered. So, I mean, Connor Sounds' career is already over, but, you know, it won't be 
when you deal with smart judici judicial people from an arbitrator to a judge uh, to someone handing out, you know, uh, enforcement measures, like it won't be lost upon these guys when people don't testify or they run or they scurry because it's basically viewed as an admission of guilt. Again, we, you know, Nevada and I, um, we don't want to be, but we are legal experts at this point on some things. And it's like, you know, uh, it's usually like when, when there's bad behavior by one party, it doesn't get lost on the, uh, on the arbitrator or on the, on the judge. Like, I mean, they'll be like, yeah, it was not lost on me that you did this and you did this. And this was with malice and you're going to get hammered for this. You know, again, these guys, you know, these guys are doing these rulings in the, in these, in these legal teams and these, these lawyers, they're smart. They're really sharp people. They're well paid. And, you know, so when there's something that, you know, potentially, because you know, again, like if there's nothing to hide, then Martin Connor signs sit there in front of the, you know, and, and give a deposition and say, yes, this is what happened. This is what I did. No, they didn't know anything about it. No, they didn't pay for anything. No, it was just me going rogue, crazy man, trying to make my, my make my market Michigan football. Um, but he knows like once they get to rolling and they hit that recorder and he starts talking, he's going to have to start naming names. And, you know, he's trying to protect these guys, but uh, I think he's making it worse by not cooperating. And, you know, again, there's in like the movies and stuff, you know, it's always cool. Oh, I, I would never be a rat. I would never sing. But like in real life, people cooperate and turn in, and they flip and they, whatever you want to call it, they've turned into rats all the time. Cause when you're facing, you know, 80 years or zero years, then magically guys, they become very chatty. Uh, and I think that, you know, when you just skip out and you throw up the middle finger, that's kind of like, you might as well, you're going to get your 80 years. And I think Michigan's going to get hammered into oblivion, uh, by that Nevada. Do you have any thoughts on what I just went through? No, no, I think that's right. I think you know, cooperation is always the best. And I think the schools that have kind of gotten off you know, relatively lightly, the NCAA has always kind of blotted them for their cooperation. And, and uh, Michigan has chose a different tact and that they're going to pay for that. Well, like, like, you know, obviously the best thing to do is just don't, don't do wrong. The second best thing to do is, you know, if you do do wrong, fess up, cooperate, go through it. Because I think that when – that, you know, like when the executioner is coming and they say, hey, look, I was honest. I told you guys what happened. It was a mistake. Show some grace. Then there potentially could be some grace there. But when you just say, oh, I know I did everything wrong. I'm not telling you anything I did wrong. I'm going to resign and quit. And we're going to fire the linebackers coach. And the one coach is going to clean out his Twitter files and all that. Like, that's like literally the opposite of what you should be doing. So, again, do I care? Nah, but is Michigan going to get crushed? Yeah, because again, like, you know, it's, it's like when when USC knew they were about to get raided by the NCAA and they took Reggie's Heisman, like, their athletic director, like, locked the doors, shut the people out, didn't let people do um, the research or the, you know, the examinations that they wanted to do, and they got hammered. You know, these guys show up, man, they're not there for to play around. And if you want to make their lives harder – when they get the opportunity to smash you like your little bug, they're going to. Uh, Herschel, thanks for being a Scoop Ultra member. Appreciate you, my man. What position does Sonny play next year? Well, I think he ends up at well linebacker. I don't think he's going to be staying back at safety. I think that uh, we got to find a guy who's a little smaller, a guy who's um, built for that. I mean, you don't see guys that big playing safety because in modern football, you got to be able to cover. And, and Sonny did a nice job. He was young. But his skill set is in 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 the box, like down in the box, playing well linebacker, maybe being a rush defensive end, something of that magnitude. Back deep playing safety is crazy, um, and I think that that'll uh, come to a head soon. Nevada, you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think I definitely think that he is a a guy that's got to be at linebacker. I, I think he's I, I won't say ill equipped, but I say less equipped to play safety. And, you know, again, as much talk as we're doing about downs of safety and, you know, we got Ransom back, but Malik Hartford is a guy that was really, really good last year early. And he kind of got the, uh, the uh, Josh Proctor treatment where he went in, didn't play much, and then we didn't hear much about him again. But I'm telling you, 
don't forget the name. Malik Hartford's going to be a baller at Ohio State. And I think everybody on the defense knows that. And he's a guy that uh, has been there. And I think, uh, you know, a guy like that is a reason why you push Sonny closer to the line of scrimmage. And I think, I think he's a little linebacker the whole way. Yeah, I think he's a guy that – a guy like Malik Hartford will benefit dramatically from Matt Gariani. Because Matt Gariani is a guy that knows the defense. He now saw he wants a safety position run. Again, we've said ad nauseum, safety-driven defense, even though it's really two safeties and a nickel, but safety-driven defense. Um, and I don't think Perry was coaching it to the way the level that Jim Knowles wanted it. I mean, obviously, he got fired. Uh, you know, again, coaches don't like to fire coaches, but if there needs to be a change uh, and you could bring in a guy who's a better teacher for what Jim Knowles wants, like bring in his little, uh, his little acolyte, you know, Matt Giriani. And I think a guy like Malik Hartford probably didn't have the year that he wanted to have because the safety teaching wasn't where it needed to be. Uh, basically year over year. I mean, ever since Perry showed up, I don't think that it was to the standard that Ryan wanted I think last offseason when he made Tony or excuse me, Tim Walton, the overall passing defensive passing game coordinator, or, you know, he kind of gave him a title where he superseded Perry Eliano and was kind of like the head coach of the secondary. Uh, so that was like one, you know, little light bulb that went off in my head. I was like, whoa, he's going to promote, you know, the, the two guys came in at the same time and one guy just got promoted over the other one uh, to run the secondary. Uh, and then this year they they finally fire Perry and they bring in Matt they bring Matt back in as a full time guy which they probably should have done that initially but I think they wanted that cachet of Perry Eliano uh, coming off Sauce Gardner and coming off of uh, Kobe Bryant winning the Thorpe they thought oh this guy would be a dynamic recruiter and he really wasn't so I think the safeties I think the safeties are going to take a big step this year man with Matt Gariani running the show the way that he can run that defense the way Jim Knowles wants him to at that safety position. Uh, I think a guy like Malik Hartford, you know, starting like today, uh, you know, should be with that guy every day and just saying, hey, teach me this like it's the back of my hand. Um, and then I think also getting Lathan back is huge uh, for the development of a guy like Malik Hartford because when you get a guy back like Lathan who's been around the block, you know, he's been here for, you know, this will be year three in this defense, um, he's going to know that thing cold by now, you know. And, and when you get a young guy next to you, um, or if you get, say, I mean, you know, by the grace of God, we get Caleb Downs in here, you know, his development will be accelerated because you're going to have a fifth year guy. He's like a cap. He's a captain candidate type kid. Great kid. Great person really was playing great football, you know, until his injury. And when he went down, it killed us. It really hurt us. Um, so I'm excited to see what Lathan can do, but I'm excited to see what he can provide to whoever's next to him uh, at the off safety. Cause I think that's going to be really crucial um, as this defense continues to develop. Cordero Jackson, thank you for the 10. Appreciate you, brother. How does ESPN and others not recognize the talent on the 2024 OSU team and have them ranked so high? They have teams like Oregon, uh, UGA, Bama, Michigan, all ranked before them. Well, that's crazy because there's no way I'd ever rank Michigan ahead of us other than, I know they won the national championship, but, you know, Again, those that's probably like a way too early poll. I'd imagine like the way too early 2024 football poll. But, you know, Harbaugh is still technically their coach. He's not going to be their coach, but he's still technically the coach. So once he leaves, I think you got to reshuffle that. And then I also don't think that accounts for it. They probably did that poll right after the bowl game was over, you know, the, the national championship was over, and they said, oh, here's the whatever. But, you know, since they lost McCarthy, there's no way you put him ahead of Ohio State. There's no way. Um your thoughts on that, Nevada? You think that's just maybe a, some fodder, maybe a way too early poll that they probably did right after the bowl game? Yeah, it's probably one with Saban still as the coach, Harbaugh still as the coach. Plus, you have to remember the national day. <coughs> the reason that you're here on this site is because we're experts on Ohio State football. These other places where, you know, if you're trying to do a national thing or do national coverage, you might know a little bit. You, you, you know, like one inch thick on 50 teams where we know 50 feet thick on one team. We don't pretend to be experts on UCLA football or Washington State football or Tennessee football, but we know Ohio State football, and uh, it, 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 you're the benefactors of that. So now as podcast listeners, now you know Ohio State football. And I'm just telling you, Ohio State is absolutely loaded. So whatever you're seeing, whenever you're seeing it, any poll that doesn't have Ohio State in the top three, top two, top one, don't even give a listen to you. You just, you just know more. Because the narrative's out there that Ohio State was falling apart. Everybody was leaving. 
Look at all these guys leaving. Julian Fleming's leaving. Sam Hart's leaving. Joe Royer's leaving. Oh, you know, last one out of Ohio State closed the door, and you know, Kyle McCord leaves, and they're broken, and and you know, different. You know, we've reloaded the guys we lost. It's fine. Uh, the guys we've added, crazy. The guys we've kept, insane. And uh, it's going to be a wild year in 2024. And Ohio State, the, you, you won't have to believe me. You guys know. You guys can do your own depth charts. You know, this isn't just Nevada Buck firing you guys up during the offseason. You look at that depth chart, you know how good this team is going to be. And uh, the rest of the world is going to find out about that uh, come, come September. But maybe there's a betting advantage to you early. So take advantage of that with Ohio State. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think if you're if it's this way too early college football poll, um, they had uh, they put this out on January eighth, which is probably right after Michigan won the national championship. They had Georgia at one, um, which I'm fine with that. Uh, Texas at two, again fine with that. Oregon at three, I'm fine with that. They have Bama at four, but it does still say that Nick Saban is the head coach. So obviously this is you know not up to date. Um, you know, with the uh, they have Ohio State at five, Michigan at six. So you know, I I don't know, man. I I, I think that when you've got, you know, I mean, again, these, these things don't mean much. These are just kind of fodder. But you got to look at the coaching changes, the coaching adjustments, because that's that's where I look at. I'm like, guys, like you, you lose Jim Harbaugh and Nick Saban off that list. I mean, it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be the same universe of uh as opposed to you know if you have those two guys back because those are two of the top five coaches in in college football easily probably two of the top three um you know they've both won national championships at this point uh nevada do you do you feel all right i mean georgia at one i'm fine with and they're going to be good they're always going to be good texas at two i'm fine with oregon at three and bama is not going to be number four anymore but um your thoughts nevada yeah, I, I, like I said, we're gonna have, we're gonna get a chance to see Oregon. I'm just telling you, Ohio State is gonna be really, really, really good, really, really yeah. good. I mean, you know, it's it's usually you go into a year and you're like, wow, we're gonna be really good on offense, but we get some questions on defense. We're really gonna be on defense, but we get some question marks on offense. Man, we do not have a lot of question marks on this team. Um, yeah, you you know, it, it, then the next thing is you know, is is it like a 14, 15 situation where you're coming off a national championship. So you're kind of fat, dumb, and happy. You're fighting complacency. <coughs> nope. You know, don't have that issue either. So you've got motivation. You've got talent. You've got depth. You've got experience. I mean, you really, there's just no excuses for this Ohio State team. And again, it's to make a point, you know, or reemphasize a point I made earlier, this isn't like one of those years like 1998 where we have the best team in football and the inexplicable happens against Michigan State. We slip up, yeah. and and we lose, and and that's the end of the year. And we finish second to Florida State in the polls or whatever it was, and we're like, oh, my gosh, we have the best team in the country. Like, this year's a 12-team playoff, so we're in. It's only a question of our seeding and where we're going to go, but we're going to get a chance to settle all accounts with everybody this year, and um, I, I can't wait, so let's go. Great time to have a deep team, 2024. We have the deepest team in the country. And uh, that'll that'll benefit us come playoff time. Yeah, I uh, I totally agree. Um, Riley McGee, thank you for the deuce. Who are the twenty two starters next year in your opinion? Well, I've got actually on BuckeyeScoop.com actually did this the other day just to kind of put pen to paper. So quarterback Will Howard obviously is the guy. Ryan Day's hand picked choice. I think he'll still battle Devin Brown. That'd be interesting. Uh, Trey Henderson, Quinchon Judkins, obviously kind of 1A, 1B. The X, uh, I think that'll be a Mecca, JJ. Um, you know, the H could easily be a Mecca too. The H is the slot. The Z is the speed guy. That's Cornell Tate. Uh, then I, you know, the O-line, I've got, um, you know, Jelani. You know, probably be G. Scott to start just because he's a senior. But I think Jelani, um, you know, if they get him developed, will be you know, hopefully the, the guy that takes over because I don't think G's an every down tight end. Uh, Josh Simmons, Donnie Jackson, Seth McLaughlin slash Carson Hinsman. Uh, the right guard, right tackle thing will be very interesting because I know they want to move Josh Fry to right guard. Uh, so I put him slash Carson slash Tigra. Right tackle um, could easily be Josh Fryer if Josh Fryer, um, if nobody can can pass to protect at right tackle uh, to Ryan's knowledge or not to his knowledge, to his satisfaction. And you could easily put Josh Ryer back out there. Um, I think they'd prefer to have 
Luke Montgomery, George Fitzpatrick, Tigra, um, or a portal guy take over that spot. Um, but again, you know, as much as people hate Josh Schreier, he was all Big Ten this year, his first team all Big Ten as a tackle. So, you know, it's not like it was he was total trash, but I think people have got to realize like he wasn't as bad as you think. Um, and some of it had to do with our boy uh, Kyle McCord not stepping up in the pocket. DN, Jack Sawyer, three technique, Ty Leak, nose guard, Ty Hamilton, uh, DN, JT2, and Maloal. Again, that's about as easy as I could ever do. Um, at middle linebacker, I want Cody Simon, Will, I want CJ Hicks, corner, corner, Denzel Burke, Dave Sitting Benoson, Nickel, Jordan Hancock, Adjuster, Lathan Ransom, Bandit, Sonny Styles. Sonny Styles could easily move up to Will um, if Malik Hartford steps up or someone else steps up or they shift uh, somebody back to that safety spot. So, uh, and then, you know, you can throw in Edric Houston and some of these guys uh, as backups to to Jack and JT. Kenyatta Jackson, obviously, is a guy you got to watch. Um, you know, but this is a deep, talented squad, and I'm really excited to see it. Uh, Nevada, any disagreements? I imagine probably not, because this is about as easy of a death chart as you can ever set, because there's so many guys back. No, but... I mean, when you're saying those names, and I'm, I'm just kind of pinching myself that we got those guys back for 2024. Oh, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It, <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, it, yeah. it is literally crazy. Because I'm sitting here listening to you saying the names, and I'm like, man, I, I can't believe that those guys are back. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun year. I'm going to savor every minute. I'm going to savor every minute of, uh, of spring ball, of summer conditioning, of fall camp. And I uh, can't wait for the first game because – Wow, what, what it's really going to be a treat watching every single game of this guy. I think it's, they're going to be doing some special things. Uh, you know, I think the numbers they're going to put up are going to be crazy on both sides of the ball. So I, I can't wait for it. So go, go, Bucks. Let's go. Yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, so that was a great question. I appreciate you, Riley. JD, thanks for the five. Well, it's not the Madison Downs at the portal. It's not yet. Um, I'm sure that Kane Womack, who is their new DC, his first order of business is to get. I sit down with him, explain the defense, explain how they're gonna do whatever with him. But you know, are you are you gonna trust your career to a guy who is the head coach at South Alabama, or do you want to come to Ohio State where this place is loaded? Um, he has not, as of this show starting, he has not hit the portal. Um, so I'm sure if something had happened, uh, you guys probably would have known that, or you would have hit, been blown up the chat if he'd hit. So I assume he has not hit. Uh, Cordell Jackson, thank you for the five. Love the show. A huge fan. Appreciate you, my man. Active Army. Watching from Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Appreciate your service, my man. Again, we're very pro-military at BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, so we appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Be safe. Um, thank you for your, all, all you do for the country. Nevada, do you want to chime in real quick? Uh, God bless you for your service, man. Love the, love the military. Air Force Brad here, as I've mentioned many times. Nothing better than... Uh, better and more honorable than being in the uh, military first responders. Those are the best of the best. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. Sean Kripke, thank you again, my friend. You're on here every night. Thank you for being one of our top regulars, as always. Uh, for Nevada, the gambling man. Yes, he is. If you're making a bet today, if you can change daily, where are you betting Caleb Downs is playing in 2024? Boy, that's, that's tough. I mean... I mean, if you ask me right now, and I, and I had to place a bet, I'd say Alabama because he's not in the portal. And, you know, it, 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 he's got to take some sort of an affirmative action uh, beyond just, you know, uh, reaching out, having his people reach out and talking. Because Bama's going to fight tooth and nail to keep him there. Oh, you yeah. know, that, that's gonna be, it's going to be the number one priority for their new D.C. It would It's going to be considered a catastrophe for their new defensive coordinator and their position coach if they don't keep them. So they're all hands on deck in terms of keeping them. So I, I always bet on things not to happen. If, if, I, if it was a 50, 50 prop, um, that's the way that I bet. But um, Ohio state's got a, a puncher's chance. And if he, uh, if he, if he goes to the portal, I'm telling him he's a Buckeye. So uh, let's watch for portal action. And I think we'll know in the next 24, 48 hours for sure. Yeah. I, uh, it's going to be really interesting, but again, you know, he could, so I'm going to give it the old college try and I'm going to stick it out through workouts and spring ball. And you know, after spring ball, there's another window that opens. So if he hates the defense, hates the coaches, doesn't, you know, jive with them and he wants to go see what's out there again. Like I, that's for me, like, you know, if you're this kid and 
BAM was like, you know, we'll give you a chunk of money to stay here right now and see it out through spring. I don't know. Like, there's going to be guys that are going to be, they're not going to like their new position coaches. They're not going to like their new defense, not like the new coordinator, whatever. Um, so I don't think this thing's over because a lot of guys from BAM have already jumped into the portal. So it's, it's happening. Uh, you know, down there, there's a lot of uh, turnover. Joshua, thanks for the deuce. Does any cuss word get you demonetized? Um, I think the F word would for sure. I don't think it's any cuss word, but you know, we have this strange relationship with YouTube where they will ding us for stuff that we don't even do. Um, and we have to fix it and, you know, uh, appeal stuff all the time. So, uh, you know, to err on the, on the side of caution, I mean, I, I'm sure I've cussed a handful of times, but we try not to on here just cause there's no point. There's no point in, in doing a fun podcast, and I don't really think it adds a lot if I'm swearing. And I love to swear, but I just don't like to do it um, in front of people I don't know, people that enjoy this. And I don't think it's additive to the show. Um, and I'm sure Nevada would back me on that. Uh, but your thoughts on that, Nevada? <coughs> yeah, I, I, look, mm-hmm. we all swear, or I shouldn't say we all swear, but I swear in everyday life, but not on not on the air because... We, I don't know who's listening. I don't know if we have, there's kids out there. There's people yeah, that are exa- offended exactly. by that. Exactly. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it in front of kids and I'm not going to do it in front of people that I don't know. And I'm intelligent yeah. enough to be able to communicate without swearing. So let's, uh, let's not, let's have a no swearing show. Yep. And I love it. And, and I get compliments on it all the time. So it's working. So I appreciate you guys, David, uh, Hankins, thank you for the five thoughts on the tight end from OU that transferred in. Have not heard much about him. So talk about Will Kazmarek. He is our new blocking tight end. Um, had, I think, like 20 catches this season. Um, not a huge target in the passing game, but no tight end ever is at Ohio State. But I, I like his ability. They needed a blocker. They needed a veteran blocker. You know, I think that um, some of these young guys better get going. You know, I mean, Sam Hart just got chased uh, out of the room, and I'm sure some of these other guys that are coming on to year three and they haven't played um, – it's going to be nice and toasty in their uh, in their tight end room because uh, those guys, you know, you shouldn't have to be bringing in a blocking tight end if guys like Bennett Christian and, and some of these guys weren't uh, developing the way that they wanted to. But they felt like they had to go get a veteran. They did it. Uh, so some of those young guys, uh, the heat's going to be turned up during 6 a.m. workouts and during spring ball. Um, and if not, there's a good chance they could be shown the door. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how many of these guys are still here after spring ball. Um, with this kid showing up with Jelani, G, those guys are locked in. Uh, you got the new kid, the new Canadian kid coming in, Max LeBlanc. Um, so they're going to get a look at him. But they, uh, we need some more talent in that tight end room, for sure. And uh, Jelani's got to really step up. Uh, David uh, Furness, thank you for the 10. I appreciate you, brother. If you have a question, try to toss that in the chat. I will look for it. Armed Therapy. I love this AVI. The double flex. That is super, super sweet. Uh, thanks for the 20. Hello, Burt Garten and Bavada Nuck. I like that. Love you guys. Uh, do you guys think all these players returning for the Brotherhood and I all Cashola will become complacent? So hungry. Hope not. Go Bucks. Well, I don't know why they'd be complacent when they've gotten beaten by Michigan three straight years. They've never won a Big Ten championship and they missed the playoffs the last couple of years. Or they missed it this this year, Georgia, this you know, obviously Georgia two years ago was a was a was a nightmare how that thing ended but i don't know how these guys could ever be complacent when they haven't really done anything in their careers of note so i i, I think complacency is the furthest thing from their mind um if you're michigan's program and you're you won the national championship and everybody's lauding you and seeing how great you are that is a totally different ball of wax but nobody's walking around columbus right now when they see these football players and saying Man, you guys were so great last year. Man, I sure love that that Michigan game. Man, I love that Missouri game. Like, I mean, they're on a two game losing streak right now. So, I don't know how they could possibly be complacent. But your thoughts on the non that Nevada? Well, look, you have to remember there's three primary goals for the Ohio State football program every season: win the Big Ten, beat Michigan, win the national championship. And we haven't accomplished any of those three goals the last three years. So. For, you know, is that fair? You know, well, life isn't fair, but in, in standards are high. But at Ohio State, you just mentioned we're on a two-game losing streak. We, we don't have many two-game. How many two-game losing streaks have we had at Ohio State? Not a bunch. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and uh, so for Ohio, for Ohio State guys, yeah, I think complacency 
is the furthest thing from their mind of anything. I mean, this team is going to be driven by a hunger to, you know, to kind of redeem themselves. And, you know, and I'm not going to say revenge tour or any of that stupid Michigan stuff, but uh, it, these guys are definitely going to be motivated throughout the off season. They know what's at stake. And, you know, in, in large part, that's a lot of the reason why a lot of these guys came back. They, they didn't want to go out this way. They didn't want that to be their lasting members of Ohio State football. And I will give them an, an excuse and an opportunity to come back and reload the MF clip. And we're reloading the MF clip and let's go. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that complacent, complacency is the furthest thing from their minds right now because the, the season ended as an absolute disaster. And then – the knife not only was like shoved into him, but it got twisted around a thousand times watching Michigan win the national championship and have kind of the dream season. That, you know, I mean, the Ohio State dream season previously was the 14 season where we beat Bama and then we win the national championship. Like that was as sweet as it could ever get for Ohio State fans. So to see Michigan, you know, enjoy the same thrill of, you know, ending Nick Saban's career and then they win the national championship, like, it has to drive Ryan Day and, and the players in that building crazy because they literally watch their arch enemies do what they what their dreams were. So, you know, and now the you know the tabs do, and now you know it's a new season and everybody's zero zero. And uh, we get to see these guys in Columbus this year. Uh, Tina Butera, thank you for the ten. Appreciate you. Uh, also, thank you for the twenty. What is Cade Stover doing? Didn't he miss the NFL deadline? Cade is gone. He's not coming back. Um, I don't think every single player in the world has to put out an edit or a Hayes Fawcett or a I'm gone, love you, um, cash rules, everything around me, whatever, you know. Uh, I mean, these guys all put out these edits, but I mean, there was a time where guys declared and they didn't make an edit for everything. So I just don't think Cade made an edit, um, but he is gone. Um, had a very good, very solid career at Ohio State. Uh, he's got to get healthy uh, and he has to run fast at the Combine. Um, that'll basically determine his draft stock. But I think he'll have a nice career. Like, again, if he can stay healthy, um, kind of be that second tight end, blocking tight end, special teams guy, uh, I think he's got a lot of upside. You know, and tight ends now in the league are, I mean, Sam Laporte just had the greatest rookie season ever for a tight end um, as a rookie. So, you know, these guys can can get loose and be versatile. Um, they can have a long career, and, and Cade's very versatile. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts on Cade Stover? Um Again, I, I I saw people saying that he missed the deadline, but I just don't, you know. Th there's no way that he's he's he didn't. I, I just think he just didn't put it in a. Um, he didn't make an edit for it. But your thoughts on that? Yeah, just he's. I mean, he, obviously, Cade's a, a different kind of kid. Genuinely tough. When you talk about toughness yeah. and gen genuinely tough. He's a genuinely tough dude. Scary dude. Um, yeah, gonna go on to the NFL. Just gotta be, gotta be healthy. He'll, if he's healthy, he'll have a great productive career in the NFL. If he's not, he'll be successful in life and whatever he does. Cause he's just that kind of kid. So I uh, wish him well in his, uh, in his next endeavors. Yeah. I, um, really excited to see, uh, you know, what he can do in the league. He's a guy that, I mean, really, really had a nice career, uh, kind of was all over the place, but I just think he's going to be, um, he's going to do great work in, in the national football league. Um, Got our boy Fry on the road. This is interesting today. This is a kid I, I really feel good about. Um, Eric Schroeder, I'll probably, or excuse me, Mason Schroeder, I'll probably break his film down. This is a kid that literally just committed. Uh, he decommitted from Bam Ice, probably the top tackle in the 25 class. Um, big, big kid. He's been playing, starting since his freshman year. Here's Justin visiting with him. Um, it's funny, he's Johnny on the spot, because as soon as he decommitted, Kirby Smart went and saw him too, so... Uh, this is a guy we need to watch closely. Uh, again, I think we were you know, one of the five finalists when he committed to Bama. And again, it'll be this will be an interesting season for Bama. Can they keep? Can they stay anywhere near the standard that they've been at with Nick Saban? Because I think it's going to be um, a downward swing for these guys, uh, a pretty substantial downward swing, just because of what Nick Saban was able to do. Uh, Kalen DeBoer, I think, is a great coach, but. You know, his defense was not great. And you know, he got Kane Womack to re come run the defense. He was an Indiana guy. He was actually with him in 19. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, if they can hang on to a lot of these recruits. Because a lot of these recruits are decommitting because they wanted to play for the GOAT. And then, you know, like I told you multiple times, when a guy like Nick Saban retires, 
these coaches all end up end up all, elsewhere. I mean, you know, the, the, the coordinators leave, uh, you know, the line coach leaves, you know, because I mean, the first thing you saw him do was bring all of his own guys with him from Washington. So those guys have to go reformulate relationships. Um, a lot of those guys have no ties to the South, so it, it's not like they're bringing in Georgia staff or uh, Ole Miss's staff, and and they'd re- had you know cross paths recruiting some of these kids. These guys up in Washington haven't recruited any of these guys. So they got to go out and meet these guys and start from basically square one. And I think it's going to be uh, absolutely uh, fantastic to see what these guys can do. And I think Ryan Day is going to eat their lunch. I think Ryan and these guys are ready to pounce. And, you know, I think that, you know, if a kid's been burnt by a 72-ish coach, I think that he's going to swing the other way and say, oh, we got a guy who's in his mid-40s at Ohio State and long-term deal – doing great a lot of talent a lot of guys coming back so obviously you know, the program's in the right way the, the culture's in the right way i'm gonna go check those guys out oh jj smith just went there Ooh, let's do that too Andrew Houston. Ooh, perfect let's go see what these guys are about and i think that that's going to be a huge benefit for ohio state football going forward is that you know when you lose a couple of you know monoliths like jim jim harbaugh nick saban um, and, and Ryan Day's, you know, standing here, you know, developing what he's developing. Like, I think people are going to be excited about that. Uh, Cordero Jackson, thanks for the deuce. Next year, Day might hang 100 on the Cheaters up north. He might. I mean, if he does, it'd be fantastic. But, it, I mean, there's been a lot of pent-up anger and anxiety about that game. And, again, it'll be fascinating to see if Sharon Moore gets that job. How bad are the sanctions? You know, do they, do they sanction him into a nuclear winter, which they could? Um, and how appealing is that job? You know, cause frankly, like if I'm Sean Moore, I might want to go Jim Harbaugh and go to LA, you know, cause I mean, Harbaugh, you know, when he's out in LA, there's nobody in the, in there's nowhere in the universe where people care less about sports than Los Angeles. So he's going to be out there and, you know, if you're in Michigan or Ohio, I mean, it's like everywhere you go, you're surrounded by, you know, people that are really, that really, really care and really, really support the teams out there. Nobody cares. So, I mean, he can go walk around the beach and nobody even know who he is. Uh, we're in Ohio or Michigan. It's a totally different ball of wax. Uh, Nevada, could we hang a hundred on Michigan next year? I just want to hang a win. I, I, I most I want to shut them out. I want to I want to hang a zero on them. That that's the thing that I want. I want to I want to punish them defensively. Um, to me, that would be way more satisfying than even even when we won like sixty two to thirty eight or whatever. They scored thirty eight points and that or whatever the heck it was, and that always sat bad with me that they scored that much. I want to just throttle them defensively <laughs> and just just choke their life out there. And and, and I'm, I'm going to be um, – that's that's the game I'm, I'm looking – I haven't looked forward to a game so much uh, in a very long time, but I'm looking forward to that one a lot. But I'm, I'm looking for a big effort from the defense that day. Yeah, I, I am too. I'm really excited about that. Well, uh, we've been going for a hot minute. We appreciate you guys. Nevada, any final thoughts as we get into Wednesday tomorrow? No, just uh, keep an eye. We're on Caleb Downs. Watch, watch for the portal. If he enters the portal, uh, definitely game on. Um, there's, like I said, I have people that are telling me he is entering the portal. Um, not sure if I believe it yet, but that's why I've had people tell me. We'll, uh, we should all know here in the next 24, 48 hours. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, Harbaugh to the Chargers, still sticking with that. If, if you're seeing betting odds that are available on your local. Uh, betting app, I would take advantage of that. We, we gave that to you a long time ago when that was not the chalky pick. And uh, now I think it's pretty chalky, but I think it's still a good value for you. So Harbaugh to the Chargers. I love that. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for kicking it with us again. As always, uh, if you enjoy this content, hit that like button. That little thumbs up is huge for us. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for the Super Chats. We had a nice night today. Uh, great questions as always from you guys. So thank you guys uh, for helping us uh, run the show. I'm telling you guys, you guys bring those super chats, great questions. It makes it so fun uh, to interact and see what you guys really want to talk about. Super excited about the direction of Ohio State right now. Fantastic A-plus president hire, A-plus athletic director hire. Uh, all these guys coming back for the football program. I think this is going to be a banner year for Ohio State football, and I couldn't be more excited. So I appreciate you guys as always. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. You'll get an alert every time we go live, which is usually around 7 o'clock every night. So, again, thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from. Shout out who you guys are watching with. Because I always like to see if uh, if families watch this together, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend. I've got I've had every 
amalgamation that you could imagine of people that watch the shows together. So, so it's cool. I, you know, uh, uh, daddy, daughter, uh, shout out my girl, Jesse, again, uh, keeping our in keeping you in our prayers, girl. I hope you're feeling better. Um, but yeah, I just love to see, uh, as much information as I can about the show. Cause again, I appreciate you guys tuning in. It's so fun to do. Um, but with that being said, thank you so much, Buckeye nation. And thank you, scoop family. We will talk to you tomorrow. Go bucks.